The Institute of Internal Auditors presents All Things Internal Audit Tech. In this episode, hear from multiple thought leaders on how AI is being used in risk and cybersecurity audits. They'll discuss the opportunities and benefits AI offers internal auditors. First, let's jump into AI and compliance programs with David Petrisky, Director of Professional Standards at the IIA, and Brian Willis, Senior Lead Auditor at LBMC. Have you seen use cases where people are uh, training the AI model to uh, on their system, so that the the model understands you know the uh, the controls and, and the operations in their particular organization? Yes, and in fact, one of the uh, one of the great features with uh, uh, say a Chat GPT is that you can actually you can actually create custom GPTs and then train that on specific information. What we're doing at LBMC and and you've asked about PCI, but specifically around PCI is we developed a, a, a PCI GPT and we've introduced all of the PCI documents, the report templates, the, uh, the FAQs, the uh, supporting documents, the you know, knowledge based documents that they've published uh, into this tool. And based on having all based on all of that information, we're able to then prompt that GPT with questions about, hey, what are the specific requirements around multi-factor authentication or data encryption? And we can get the answers we need specifically around that. And we can know that because it's been trained on that document, on that PCI documentation, that the answers we're, get, we're getting are well-informed and it's not just uh, maybe hallucinating and just making up answers that it's called off of uh, uh, off of the internet. Next, let's turn to Kunal Agrawal, Director of Customer Success at Diligent, to discuss the usefulness of AI in continuous risk assessment and scenario analysis. How are internal auditors using artificial intelligence for risk assessments? So I would say there are different areas where internal auditors can really find AI to be useful. Number one definitely is the interviews and surveys. So AI really gives a lot of power to analyze the text data, uh, which are part of the surveys, uh, and it can create different patterns, which can flow into uh, as an input into your into your process. The number two could be um, you know the automatic risk assessment, uh, which means that you're trying to get into a more uh, continuous risk assessment process. Uh, so you're not waiting for a certain period or certain time frame to do your risk assessment, but you already have the highest risk identified through AI. And then what you're trying to do is add on whatever you want to add to that. So the 60 to 70% of the job is already done. The other thing could be, you know, scenario analysis where, uh, you know, you can actually bring in data from different departments and then you can run scenarios uh, based on that to uh, to get the input for for your risk assessment. Is it being used at all uh, at, at an engagement level for engagement risk assessments? I mean, you mentioned the surveys, and that mm -hmm. would probably uh, be a pretty good method. But are, are there other ways that uh, it's being used to scope engagements or identify risks uh, within particular subject areas? I think it is definitely used in risk scoring for sure. I think that is one area where it is definitely used. Uh, communication is another area we're picking up where if audit teams are communicating with other departments, sometimes you, know, you want to make sure that the audit teams, not only the audit teams, but the other teams outside of audit are aware of the risks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is also helping out in communication outside of the audit department. So there's engagement, there is risk scoring, and there's communication. Building on that, Wes Bluckick, Senior Manager at Grant Thornton, and Ethan Rohani, Principal at Grant Thornton, highlight how AI is being applied to enhance the risk assessment process, making it more dynamic and efficient. Now, are, are there any other uh, applications or, or use cases that uh, you, know, you, you see out there that we haven't touched on yet that you think you, know, you, you, you want to get <laughs> this the message out? There are many. On Be careful yeah. what you ask for. I, I could go on for hours, but uh, I would say um, one of the big ones that we're working on right now are the risk assessment space. Okay. So um, there's a lot of opportunity for risk evaluation, risk identification, um, performing risk impact assessments, yep. and, and, um, and yeah. doing scoring it, analysis. We, we, yeah. Will it? Uh, uh, forecast or estimate uh, you know a risk exposure. <laughs> so, we are working on a tool right now that I'll actually do that really? with with the, a dynamic framework model. So you can actually input your organization's framework for mm -hmm. for weighted scoring because every organization is a little bit different depending on the industry and the, and the business. So uh, you can be able to you can input that information mm -hmm. and and without giving away too much before we roll it out, uh, it will allow you to to help. Um, score and, and risk rank and, and pinpoint areas of focus. 
I will say one of the most interesting use cases that I've seen, and it's related to the risk assessment question, is enabling folks to have conversations at all hours of the day and doing the preliminary discussions with the AI and gathering that information so that when the humans actually talk, it's a much deeper, more useful conversation and you've gotten a lot of the little things out of the way. Yeah. Kind of streamlines things. It also enables somebody that's in Denver, Colorado to have a conversation in Bangalore on their time schedule so that you're not trying to shift hours to have a conversation at two in the morning. So again, employee satisfaction goes skyrocketing when you're not getting up at two in the morning to go have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Those global conference calls. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank, thank you, Dave. Appreciate us. it. All right, yep. thanks. Finally, Brian Willis returns to discuss the practical applications of AI in enhancing risk assessment. Can you tell us a little bit about how generative AI is being used in cybersecurity? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, AI really uh, is presenting itself as, an, as a very effective and promising tool uh, for cybersecurity audit and compliance. Um, and particularly when we talk about AI, uh, I think the thing that, that most people are, are talking about is generative AI, so chat GPT and Copilot and tools like that. Um, and I think the way I like to think about it is, imagine if you could add a team member who knew everything about everything, everything that was ever documented about cybersecurity audit and compliance. That's what a, having AI as a tool uh, for your compliance program is like. So uh, even better than uh, your traditional Google search, uh, where you would uh, perform a search and have to look through links and information, everything. Now you can get that information just in a conversational manner. Uh, so it really is a, a great tool that's benefiting our, uh, our industry. A couple of the key benefits I like to talk about are audit accuracy and consistency. So just like with getting a Google search, you're able to go through uh, documented information that's been published on the internet the same way that's where that information that a generative AI tool uses comes from, is straight from the internet. And so when you're having that conversation, it's like being able to get directly to that information without having to click through search links and things. Uh, so it brings that element of, of accuracy. Consistency, it can support your program uh, again, through having that reliable knowledge base uh, to be able to support folks who are both conducting audit and as well as those folks who have responsibilities for uh, implementing and maintaining a compliance program. The other benefit I like to think about are the, the cost of compliance, in, both in terms of audit time and expenditure. Um, so uh, at OBMC, we're using already a couple of tools to support and supplement our audit activities to where uh, the, the tool allows us to review documentation, review evidence that our clients provide to us in a much more timely manner. It can search through a 300 page uh, security policy and find the answers we're looking for in an instant uh, without somebody having to search through that document. Likewise, uh, if you are um, for a team that is either responsible for maintaining compliance or for conducting an audit, if you're an internal or an external auditor, it just results in fewer man hours uh, on the audit. You're able to uh, go through these activities, execute them quicker, and so the cost of compliance uh, comes down. So just a couple of key benefits that we're seeing with AI and, and cybersecurity. Well, thank you very much, Brian. It's been great talking to you about uh, internal audits use of artificial intelligence. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and rate us. You can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can also catch other episodes on YouTube or at the IIA.org. That's T-H-E-I-I-A dot O-R-G.